Hey everyone, Nick Nader, Senior Solution Engineer at ISOS Technology here. And today we're going to be talking about Jira Service Management's team operation. Specifically, we're going to talk about the functionality that they migrated over from OpsGenie proper, that standalone product that's an alert hub, into Jira Service Management's own environment. We're going to highlight the key differences and some of the functionality that they added when they made that transition over. Let's dive right into it. Here we are in our Jira demo environment. We're on the home landing page. And we already have functionality coming over from that OpsGenie product. Uh, we have on-call schedules up here in the top right where we can see whether we're on call for one of our operations teams that we're a member of, as well as alerts that are coming into our operation team uh, that we may need to acknowledge or close out. So we can jump straight into the alerts or straight into on-call schedules from this home page. Now, when Atlassian moved the functionality over from OpsGenie into Jira Service Management and your Jira environment, they kind of hit it within the team's functionality that they've been expanding on recently. So up here in the top drop-down panels, we can click on that Teams uh, tab here and then either create a new team, uh, or if we already are part of an operations team or some kind of team within Jira, we would just select that team. So we're going to drill into this Web Services team here, and we'll find this Operations, go to Operations panel down here, and this is where you're going to see all of the functionality that they moved over from that OpsGenie product. Now that we're in our operations team, we can then jump to Alerts, uh, and it'll look exactly like it did over within OpsGenie with a couple of added pieces of functionality here. Up here in the top right, you'll see that they added an AI, so at last an intelligence view that is going to automatically group and tag things based off of their description and other metadata coming in uh, through those alert integrations. Um, so a couple of additional views here. We also have a detailed view that looks a lot like that Jira issue view that we're used to within our Jira projects. Uh, so this is gonna be a lot of the same functionality that we had over within OpsGenie when it comes to sorting through alerts and filtering through alerts uh, with those drop-down criteria. Now, if we jump down into the on-call schedule, uh, we'll see that we have our three main components that we have for any operations team we had configured within OpsGenie. We have routing rules, which are essentially if-then-else conditional statements to say, hey, if the alert coming in has this uh, criteria, then we're going to route it to this escalation policy, essentially, or uh, this escalation policy if it doesn't, right? And these escalation policies then determine at what time interval we're going to notify what users, right? So uh, for five, the first five minutes, we would be uh, notifying the admins of the web services team if it's a major web outage and we got routed to that escalation policy versus a normal alert coming in uh, would go to all the on-call users of the web services team that are on this on-call schedule. Um, and then five minutes in, if, it, if it's not acknowledged, uh, the next user on that on-call schedule, right? And then 10 minutes and all the members of the web services team. So the routing rules link to the escalation policies that then send out notifications about those alerts uh, based off of these on-call schedules down here. Now moving right along, the integrations piece is essentially the same as it was within OpsGenie. You have pre-built integrations that you can drill into and configure. Now the one key here is you won't see Jira Service Management or Jira Software on this list anymore. And that's because they moved those integrations into what they call now Syncs. And Syncs is a way to configure, very similar to an integration, uh, a connection to the current Jira site that you're in, a specific project within it, or a different Jira sites project. If we were to select this current Jira site and then type in our name of our sync and we can say, you know, JSM help desk incidents or something like that within here, uh, we can assign it to a team, usually the team that we're uh, in right now. And then we could select the project that we want to pull data from, specifically Jira issues created, uh, to then generate alerts and notifications out of, right? We set up that sync and then we have the same rules for creating and processing alerts uh, as well as rules for taking actions against alerts. So, hey, this is when we want to create alerts out of incidents coming in from our help desk or close them automatically or acknowledge them automatically. Uh, and then here is what we can do against alerts. So say when an alert comes in from one of our integrations or from... Uh, one of our other syncs or heartbeats uh, go down or something like that, then that alert is going to generate a Jira issue within the respective project that we've created the sync with. So you can generate incidents out of alerts and you can generate alerts out of incidents through the syncs that you've hooked up in this sync section. 
Now, other than syncs, there isn't a whole lot different about the functionality since they moved it over from OpsGenie. The integrations, the heartbeats, the maintenance, the policies are all the same type of functionality that we had over within OpsGenie. So if you're interested in that, we have videos that explain that uh, within our YouTube channel. So check out the ISOS technology channel if you're looking for a deeper dive into the functionality that we're not covering on today's video. However, there are a couple of other differences and added pieces of functionality. They brought in the automation engine that we're familiar with within our JIRA projects here. So what we can do is out of templates, we can create automation rules that tend to do things based off of alerts, of course. So like when an alert is created, create an incident. Um, obviously there's a lot of ways to create incidents out of alerts, but the automation engine has other levers that you can pull and use to conditionalize the creation of those incidents. Uh, when an alert is created, let's send a message to our AWS environment, right? Or when a CPU utilization alert is created, let's run an Azure runbook to remediate and resolve that incident uh, with new relic data, right? So they have some pretty advanced rules within here that are templatized that get you off the ground running and creating some more specific and conditionalized rules for creating incidents or other JIRA issues or alerts out of or alerts and notifications coming from other parts of your platform and ecosystem. So that's everything we wanted to cover in this video. If you liked it, hop over to the ISOS Technology channel and subscribe. We've got more videos coming out pretty much every two weeks on new Atlassian Cloud functionality and some new products that they're dropping. And if you want any services around your Atlassian products, ISOS Technology is a platinum level solution partner of Atlassians. We do everything from configurations to implementations to cloud migrations. So definitely don't hesitate to jump to our channel and jump to our website uh, and contact us if you guys need any help with any of your Atlassian products. Thanks everyone, have a good one.